Hello. There's been a bit of fuss lately in the US about having to register radio controlled models over 250 grams, if I'm not mistaken. Um, and I thought I would make a little build of my own. This is a 160 size quadcopter here. And I would try making it FPV capable. I also was going to try and make it GPS hold capable as well, but I, I don't think I'll bother with that anymore. And my goal for this was to keep it under 200 grams. Now, why 200 instead of 250? Well, you may know I've just moved back from Japan and the limit for that same kind of rule in Japan is 200 grams uh, and they actually already have that rule in place as of December last year middle of December I think it was so I've been hearing from my friends over there who are going to have to put up with this and there's a whole lot more restrictive nonsense besides what you hear about in the US you have to file a flight area where you're going to fly there's a 16 page form that you have to fill out and you're going to have to also show photographs of all your um, <coughs> drones and also the transmitter that you're going to use to fly them and note down what precautions you've taken not to hurt people whatever that's supposed to mean but anyway sounds like a real pain in the ass so um, I've been hearing from my friends over there who are about to suffer through that well actually to be honest they seem to be mostly completely ignoring it at this stage I guess it'll take a few of those five thousand dollar fines for ignoring the rules for them to maybe uh, do something about it anyway that's enough talk about that uh, so this is um, I'll show you some photos in a minute but um, it's looking a bit rough at the moment I'm probably going to rearrange some things because I've flown it a little bit and it's just a bit awkward and um, this falls off in a crash and so on but anyway let's just uh, have a look at uh, some pics that I took while I was building it. It's a Grasshopper 160 is the name of this frame from I got this one from Banggood. It's a diatone frame so you can see a lot of this um, typical stuff that you get in a diatone. I think it actually says diatone on there maybe. Yeah. Um, I wanted to keep it light so I didn't use the top plate and I'm using a Nase 32 ripoff that I also found on Banggood this is not an official one. Uh, it says Rev 5 on there, so they must be at least <laughs> copying the revision, revisions, maybe. Uh, it seems to work okay so far, and I haven't had any problems with it. And the reason I'm using this instead of the smaller Nase 32 that I have is because, like I say, I wanted it to... It has This one has a barometer on it and a, mag, a magnetometer, and I wanted to try doing GPS hold. Um, but with the amount of wind that we get here, I don't think it would work very well anyway. And I'm using the 2300 kV motors that I had already, and I know these are not really going to work too well. It does fly, but it's um, pretty weak. But these are just what I had at the moment, and I have some 3100 kVs sitting on my desk right in front of me now that I'm going to try later on to compare them, because I wanted to see what the, what the difference between them was. Um, this is an Orange RX 410X, I think is the... Yeah, for, uh, R410X DSM X receiver, and the reason I got this one is because it's actually PPM capable, and it's a little bit confusing there at the top. It says four channel, six channel, PWM C PPM. I think what that means is it's four channel if you're using PWM, and it's six channel if you're using PPM. Um, so there's five pins there, and the one on the uh, one of these ends would be uh, that one there, I think. So this, if you're using 4-channel PWM, you wouldn't be using this. This is just for binding only. But if you are using PPM, you can get the PPM output on that pin there. And I've just um, taken those pins off to make it even lighter and flatter. And I've flown this quite a bit, and the antennas, unfortunately, rip off it very, very easily. So I had to um, scrape, scrape off that black, whatever that stuff is, epoxy or whatever, and get down to a point where I could solder them back on. These are not the original ones, but um, just a bit of wire should do it, I think. Seems to be working okay. The ESC I've got on here is one that I've been using in a few other of my very small and light builds, so I'm just sort of reusing that one again. Uh, this is a 4-in-1 10-amp ESC that I got on Banggood last year. They don't seem to be stocking this one anymore, so um, I don't think you can get this one in its exact... Um, in this incarnation, but... If you just take a little look at that there, there's this horrible big inductor lumpy thing sticking out at the back of it, which is kind of annoying when you're trying to make it um, sit it down onto a flat surface. 
but I did manage to find something on Banggood that's listed now which seems to be very similar so I'm not sure if this is a like a version 2 of this one that I've got um, I noticed it's a 12 amp instead of a 10 amp and I also noticed that they don't have that big lumpy inductor on the side on the back of it now so if I was doing this again I'd probably try this one because the highest point it looks like at least the highest point on the back is this piece and the highest point on the front or whatever side these you want to call these is the uh, the regulator there which is also not that tall so this would be really nice if you're just trying to slip it in between a couple of plates that as I'm doing where there's not much space um, you, you still need this big capacitor though unfortunately they, they don't really show you that very well in the um, pictures here because it's not mentioned it's not shown in any of these pictures at least but when you get it you'd still have to use that capacitor I think as you can see by this guy's photo here um, you need to solder that on when you get it and I think it says that too doesn't it I think it says that somewhere anyway um, but yeah I really like these they're nice nice for these super small builds keeps everything nice and tidy um, not too much wiring to put together um, the Nuzzer 32 has a completely flat back which was quite nice for this too because I was able to just put some electrical tape onto the back of it like that and stick it uh, well that's the ESCs but I stuck the Nuzzer 32 almost directly onto the uh, main plate there's just one of those um, red spacer things there to keep it off just a little bit more not probably not really necessary yeah but you can see this is this makes everything really nice and compact this is probably a little more than a centimeter from top to bottom for everything and I've used a couple of I think four millimeter spaces that I there were five and I sanded them down to four and that brings it to just about the same height as that thing I think actually no I had to grind away a little bit of the frame that's right and then it fits in nicely this lumpy inductor thing um, and then the ESC has six pins on here two are for two will give you power so that'll be ground and then positive five volts coming out of here so it has a, a BEC in it as well and then the other four are the control pins for the motors and they come out just above this hole in the frame so I use that hole to pull those wires down to the other side and then bring them out for the flight controller there very nice and compact so that's what it looks like from the top when those are soldered on and that's what it looks, look, like, looks like from the bottom when the other plate that I put un, underneath the ESC is on so this is just a little fiberglass plate that was in a some sort of a damping mounter kit and it's all quite nice and tidy and sits there within about definitely within two centimeters of height um, not really sure probably can measure that I think I measured it actually no I didn't all right and I put the receiver on there like that and I just wanted to keep the antennas a little bit clear um, in a crash they shouldn't be breaking off too much because they're fairly close to the main arms that's my theory anyway so at that point I took it for a little maiden flight which I did not record but uh, it flew perfectly well very very fast to flip um, which is kind of nice but a little bit scary too and we have any more photos oh, of course we do um, yeah so for the FPV side of it I'm using this TS5832 transmitter which is very small and light and to make it lighter I took that um, brass or whatever it, mount thing is off like that and I got one of these um, light again very light uh, antennas and sort of broke it up like that and soldered it directly onto the um, antenna pads and I'm powering the video transmitter by soldering directly onto the cap that's on the uh, on the ESC so this is the the same voltage as the battery but this video transmitter is actually able to handle um, you probably can't quite see it there but it's I think it says 7 to 24 volts that one yeah 7 to 24 so that's quite handy that you don't need to find a, a specific voltage for it you just stick it on to the main battery very handy um, and then yeah so the yellow wire you can see is going through to the top 
and onto the camera directly and then the camera needs 5 volts so I'm taking the 5 volts from there on the flight controller uh, the camera I forgot to prepare a little Banggood page for that but it's uh, it's the one that's been it's the one that shows up in these um, uh, never mind it's um, the 170 degree lens so I got it because it was kept popping up on the pay, on the part of Banggood where, sh where it shows you something that you might el what other things you might be interested in so I bought it <laughs> but uh, I don't like that lens very much for FPV it's just too wide angle um, and then to put the battery on I stuck um, just a little piece of foam on top of that and it works all right but it's a bit clumsy and it keeps slipping slipping around and stuff so I'm going to, I think I'm just going to put the frame the original frame top plate back on because it's not much heavier so the battery goes on like that and the other problem with not having the frame top plate on is that the propellers are very very close to this battery here this is a 2s 900 milliamp two cell um, and it weighs 44 grams so all up this came to 178 grams and I'll just show you a little bit of footage flying um, in the backyard and it's um, really quite weak Yeah, that was full throttle just then, but you didn't think it, did you? Ready, you want to see full throttle? You want to see full throttle? You want to see what this thing can do? Ready, go! <laughs> uh, that's it. Such power. Ready, go! <laughs> yeah, it flies there, doesn't it? It's definitely feeling the wind though, isn't it? Shit. I guess you can see how windy it is from the uh, the trees at the back there. supposed to be just a flat yaw. Hmm. It's quite jumpy when it starts and stops yawing like that. If you do it slowly it's alright. So I got about 10 minutes from that flight, which was pretty good. I was just using this one here. It's not a flash battery or anything. It's, I think it's only 20C. Not not that that would really matter. So that's 2S 900 milliamp hour, 44 grams. Um, and that was using these regular 4045 props. I then tried it with these props, which are 4045 bullnose. And the performance was a little bit better. It wasn't amazingly better, but um, yeah. A, ni a nice slight improvement I think and unfortunately during that flight I managed to crash it pretty hard and I broke the one of the leaves of this um, antenna which was a bit of a bit of a shame because I was just about to try it with um, FPV okay well it's a fairly nice sunny day but it's crazy windy of course, as soon as I turn the camera on, it's not particularly windy, but um, trust me, up there it's really windy. So this, um, this little area here under the trees is probably the most sheltered area I can find. And all things considered, it's 
not a bad little area for doing FPV. Um, and there's no long grass here, there's just leaves, which is quite important because I am acutely aware of the fact that there's no buzzer on here, so if it crashes somewhere I'm going to have to find it visually. Um, so that, that could be a problem if it's in the long grass. Um, so I won't be going too far because as you can see there's long grass right there. So I'm just going to stay on these trees, uh, on the leaves. And the other reason is because of, of course, the antenna is a little bit damaged there, so I'm not not expecting to get too good video, video range anyway. So this is my cheap ass FPV setup. Haven't changed anything here for a long time, but <laughs> I'm uh, kind of thinking I I want to sooner or later. All right, let's get started. Oh, I'm supposed to be commentating, aren't I? <laughs> I forgot that the phone was recording. Um, well, let me do a little bit of belated commentary. Um, it's tipping forwards all the time. I think that's just because the battery is too far forwards. So it's really quite difficult to control in that respect. And I think maybe the rates are a little bit high for me as well because I'm only just barely touching the sticks just hardly even moving them. Um, I'm using the Luxfloat PID controller here on, on Betaflight um, and I didn't, I didn't really like it all that much when I tried it with um, my ZMR250. It didn't really, I don't know, maybe I just need to spend more time tuning it, but um, not liking it a whole lot right now, although if I just sort of take things slow, we seem to go okay. Let's see if we can go over here a little bit. Okay, I'm getting used to it now. But boy, is it touchy. So I, I'm not sure if the Lux Float PID numbers are my problem here, but it could just be because I'm not used to flying such a small frame. But I wouldn't have thought that it would make such a huge difference to have. Um, small frame like this, I mean as far as control goes. I did notice that, oh, whoa, 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 whoa. I did notice that it flipped extremely quickly when I was trying it in the backyard. So you know, I guess I just need to turn my rates down. Does anybody know, here's a question I guess, when you set the rates in your, uh, in the receiver tab, or the PID tab I should say, I thought those rates were some sort of a degrees per second measurement. So I assume that no matter which PID controller you were using, it wouldn't really matter because it's the rate of rotation, right? It should be so. If you're using Luxflow, it shouldn't be any different from from using um, the old multi-wee PIDs. So I, I'm using the same rates that I was for. The, um, the old PID controller I was using. I wonder how the uh, picture quality is here. I can see enough to fly but it's not very good. And I think another problem that I was having just when I started flying there at the beginning uh, was that I wasn't used to the... oops, we are down. Yeah, we're down. <laughs> um, I wasn't used to this really fish-eyed kind of lens either. So that was another issue. Let me go and pick that up and we'll try another flight. Well, unfortunately, I forgot to hit record on the phone when I was doing my second flight. Um, so I said a whole lot more things that I was thinking at the time, but I didn't record them. I think most of what I was saying was related to the fisheye lens because that was really quite a tricky thing to get used to. And I, f I found that even once you do get used to it, I didn't really like it that much. So I, I much prefer the less extreme 120 degree kind of um, lens field of view um, and the other thing I was probably talking about was the quality of the picture which is what you're seeing here in the video is about the same as I saw in my goggles 
in fact I think my goggles make the picture slightly worse especially in a scene like where it's white when you can see the white uh, of the sky behind the trees it just whites out everything completely on my goggles screen I mean not the whole screen but that whole area just becomes white um, so as far as his enjoyable experiences go it wasn't really up there at the moment um, but like I say this is only 178 grams so what I think I might do in the future is put the 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 proper top plate on and make it a bit more robust and maybe shift a few things around and um, give it another shot with those 3100 kV motors and I also have a very small three cell battery coming as well so I, I want to give this a good chance and who knows maybe I'll keep it as one of my regular flyers in the future you never know. Anyway, I think I'll just leave the rest of this video playing. This is uh, the last part of the flight, so by this point I was actually getting fairly used to the way things were working, so it should be a little bit better controlled. Anyway, thanks for watching.